Now, I'm going to be graphic, people. I only want to let you know from the beginning that this video is going to be graphic. The things that I'm saying, and I have graphic pictures. So, be warned. This is going to be very graphic. There's going to be blood. There's going to be a lot of things that you might not want to see. Okay? <laughs> guys it's Janine welcome back to story time with Janine this is the episode two and today we're going to talk about my adventure with COVID and rest in peace to the ones who did not make it COVID is really no joke I could tell you that much COVID knocked me on my butt it was unexpected because I've always been the one who took extra precautions. I would always wear a mask. I would wipe I would wipe my hands down with alcohol or hand sanitizer every time I touched something. For the first I think eight months I stayed in the house completely. I didn't go anywhere. So I would still wear a mask around the house because the people around me were still going to work. So they were still out there um, with possible exposure. And believe it or not, I got COVID and nobody else in my house did. This is after my mom got here. I have a couple of videos that I either posted or I'm getting ready to post where I'm putting together a whole bunch of uh, items for her. I installed a, a toilet lift I put together her walker, I put together her bedside commode, I put together her foldable wheelchair. I think it was during the filming of me putting together her walker, but I'm going to double check that for you. Back in April when I filmed it, I was coughing. And I didn't actually realize that I was coughing as much as I was until I looked back at the footage and I was like, oh, okay, so now I see. Um, so there's some footage where I'm coughing in it. What do you want to eat? <clears throat> what do you feel like eating? Now nah, that's too tight. <coughs> Cause mine goes straight. <coughs> So this is how it happened. Approximately April 5th of, 20, of 2021 is when I contracted that I got exposed to COVID-19. I was fine. Of course, you know, you don't know that you have it for the first couple of days. I actually made the video with my mom's, um, whatever it was that I put together. Like I said, I'll double check that for you. Whatever video it was that I was filming, I filmed it on the 7th of April, which was two days after the exposure. So the 8th, I started feeling bad and coughing, very strong cough like noticeable cough, but I act, I really, 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 really thought honestly that I just had a cold because like I said, I was the one that was the most cautious that you know, I was like, no, this is just a cough. This is, you know, I just have a cold or something. Later on that day on the 8th, my body started aching, like it ached bad, like my whole body ached and I laid in the bed and I didn't want to move. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I went to sleep and I didn't answer my phone. My phone was ringing. No, actually I did answer my phone, but I was like, my head was foggy. It wasn't clear at all. I wasn't really talking to people. I was like, I just need to, I just need to go back to sleep. I'll talk to you later or I'll, I'll hit you back up later. So 
my mom actually had an appointment on the 9th to see our primary care doctor. So her doctor, my doctor is now her doctor. When I went there on the 9th with my mom to take her to the to the to my doctor's office, my doctor heard and saw that I wasn't feeling well. Um, and he gave me some medication. Now, mind you, I skipped the part. The morning of the 9th, early, early, first thing in the morning before I took my mom to her appointment, I still wasn't feeling well. So I walked over to the hospital and I took the COVID test. And then I took my mom to the doctor's appointment. The doctor saw me and he was like, it really sounds like COVID. I was like, nah, I just took the test because I'm just, you know, trying to rule it out because I really don't think it is. He was like, no, I really do think it's COVID. So he sent me home. He gave me antibiotics, steroids, and cough medicine. The steroids is to keep, to keep the inflammation down. The antibiotics is to make sure that during all of this, I don't get any other infections, which will worsen everything that's going on. The next day, which was the 10th, is when I got my results back. Like four o'clock in the morning. I think it was more precisely 4.30 in the morning. I received the, I looked at my my chart. Don't ask me why I looked at it at four something in the morning. I guess I just needed to know. And it said, <laughs> my world dropped. I still want to cry now. I woke my son up and I was like, oh my God, I have COVID. So, I let everybody know, everybody that was around me and everything, I let everybody know that I tested positive for COVID. So, everything that I heard, I was told that you should go out for walks every day. You should stay active and, you know, just, you know, take care of it like it's a cold and stuff. So I did. Oh, one second. When I went to take the test, the lady gave me something. The lady, when I went to go take the test, the lady gave me this oxygenator. So what this does is it records your oxygen level and your heart rate. So what you do is you open it up like this, you put your finger in, and it's scanning and then it tells you what your results are. So my oxygen right now is at 97, my heart rate is at... Okay, so my oxygen level is at 96. My heart rate is at 86. Now this is so that when you have COVID, you can keep track of your oxygen levels because you know it tends to attack the lungs. The first couple of days I went out every day. I went for a walk. Um, mostly I went to walk, walk to the hospital walk back, walk to the store, walk back. You know, I didn't want to stay out too long. I did feel weak. I did feel horrible. But, you know, I was I was okay. I was ha handling it well. I was doing okay. On the 13th of April, I went in to the hospital, to Lincoln Hospital, to get the mono monoclonal antibody treatment. I went in there, they started the treatment. What happens is they put an IV in your arm, they put saline, they connect saline to the IV for an hour. Then they give you the monoclonal treatment, antibody treatment for an hour. And then they flush you, flush you with another hour of saline. I was there with the saline going through the IV for approximately, I would say about a half an hour. 
Now, mind you, when they put it in, they left me there alone in the room. So, with it, I was okay. I had my tablet, and I was just, you know, playing on my tablet and everything. So, a half an hour into the saline, the first saline, I got overwhelmingly sick. I got really hot. Um, my stomach started feeling like I had to use the bathroom. Like, like it felt like I had to... So it felt like my bowels was about to explode out of me. Like I had diarrhea and I, I know people have had diarrhea and they've had that like really ooh, upset stomach to it's like, oh God, I gotta go to the bathroom like right now. That's what happened to me. So I had the, I was hot. I started getting hot all over. And then I had the, and I had the, the bad bowels like, okay, I gotta go now. I'm gonna go on myself. Um, and I was dizzy. I started getting dizzy. So I stayed calm for the first couple of minutes. I started yelling because nobody was around. I was like, hello, hello. I need, to, I need, to, I need to talk to somebody. Hello. Nobody came. Now for the people who don't really know me, I have high anxiety disorder very high anxiety disorder. So the fact that nobody was answering me and I felt like I needed help and there was nobody there sent my anxiety sky high. So at this point I'm like, hello, hello, anybody? I need somebody to come, somebody come. Finally. Don't ask me how long it was because at this point, everything, like my head is cloudy, my stomach, I'm like, oh, I'm holding it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to go on myself. I'm going to go on myself. Finally, somebody came, unhooked me, unhooked me from the IV and I got up and I'm woozy. I'm like moving around like this, holding onto the wall. I'm like, please don't, the guy who unhooked me. He started to run out and I was like, please don't go anywhere because I feel bad. He directed me to the bathroom, which is like right down the hall. I was like, please, please, please don't go anywhere. I don't feel well. I don't feel well. I went, sat on the toilet, did not lock the door, didn't even close it, but it did close. Just not all the way. It was still open. I'm sitting on the toilet. My stomach goes, Bleh. so all that comes out. I'm hot. So... I'm like halfway on the toilet, I'm leaning over to the sink, I'm turning the water on, and I'm taking my hands like this and throwing the water, the cold water on me. Cold water on me. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm waking up, I'm on the floor of the bathroom, behind the door, laying in a pool of blood. My tooth, there was a tooth that was laying across the floor. I can see my tooth there. Now mind you, I have no idea what's going on because the last thing I know, I was sitting on the toilet throwing cold water on myself. You know how you always see in the movies where they have you coming to and everything is cloudy in your ear and you have like a little ringing going on and your focus is blurry and slowly your 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 focus your your vision starts focusing i went through all of that in real life all of that i was like oh my god i pulled the door open because like i said it wasn't closed i pulled it open and started screaming help help I don't know how long I was sitting there screaming. I have no idea how long I was out. Okay? No idea how long I was out. Finally, somebody came, like two people came running. I was like, oh my God. Now, I, I'm still feeling sick. I'm still nauseous. My stomach is still crazy. My head is spinning. Um, I'm cloudy. I have no idea what's going on whatsoever. All I know is I'm on the ground. My tooth is over there. 
I'm in a pile of, uh, my face is in a pool of blood. And obviously I passed out or something. I really thought I was dying. Literally thought I was dying. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? They called and they called for the emergency team to come upstairs and take care of me. They picked me up off the floor. They um, sat me down. They pulled up my clothes because, mind you, my clothes, my pants were down to my knees because I was on the toilet. They asked me what happened. I'm like, I don't know. You tell me what happened. They wind up rushing me to the emergency room. I'm going to insert a picture of what my face looked like. Apparently, I passed out while I was on the toilet. Your blood pressure and your heart rate drop, and it causes you to instantly pass out. My face, my mouth, took the blunt of the whole fall. My teeth. I'm missing one, two, and another one is hanging down. Face is bloody. They checked me out, make sure I didn't have any bruises. I had no bruises. Um, when you see the picture, you'll see that I had no bruises on my face, no black eye, no scraped nose, no scraped, no scraped nose, no scraped chin. I had no bruises on my face whatsoever. No, I, my face got nothing. My teeth took the whole blunt of that fall. <clears throat> now I can't do anything about fixing my tooth or anything because I have COVID and nobody's going to, no dentist is going to do anything about my tooth. So basically that had to wait until I was finished with COVID. So I stayed in the hospital overnight. The next morning they sent me home and they reassured me that I can handle this at home. I go home and every time I go to the bathroom, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. The first couple of times, not knowing what is going on at all, the first couple of times that I had to go and move my bowels because that same feeling kept happening where it was like, oh my God, I gotta go, I gotta go now. With this machine, I was able to figure out what was going on with my body. Anytime I sat up in bed or I got out of bed to go to the bathroom, it caused my heart rate to go over 120. With my heart rate going over 120, my blood pressure tried to regulate and my blood pressure would drop. So just going to the bathroom, I was on the verge of passing out. Plenty of times I got off of the toilet and I laid down on the floor, my face on the floor because I did not want to hit the ground again. My children, my boys, they literally had to take care of me. It got to the point that if I had to use the bathroom, I had to call somebody in the room that I had to hold on to them like this or they had to hold on to me. It got to the point where they literally had to carry me. Like all of my weight had to be put on them and basically I would be dragged to the bathroom or you know they would uplift me so that I could make it to the bathroom and they had to literally sit in there with me because my blood pressure kept dropping and my heart rate kept skyrocketing high. It got to a point where I couldn't even get out of bed and I had to use the bathroom in a bedpan. The worst, well, that is a lot, okay? What made this worse is that I would be sleeping all day, but I wasn't actually getting real sleep. It was like, I won't even say like I was taking a nap. It was to the point where I couldn't tell the difference between what was real and if I was asleep, because when I was asleep, it felt like I was still awake. So I didn't know if I was actually sleeping, if I was dreaming, if I was awake. 
my reality and dream world got meshed in together and I had no idea what, what day it was, how long I was sleeping. I was completely out of it. 14 days, because I counted every single day. When I was lucid, I counted every single day. 14 days, I was still shaky. My dreams and my sleep was a little better. I went, I think, one more day, one more week after the 14 days, and then I went and got tested on the April 27th. I got tested again, and I was negative. I was still coughing, and it was still side effects were still going on, but April 27th basically was the start of the end of my COVID adventure. But once it was said that I was negative, I was able to go to the dentist. So the dentist told me that the tooth that was still there and the tooth next to it, both of those teeth had to come out because they were damaged. There was no saving it. And if you see the pictures, you'll see that this, one of the teeth was hanging down all the way down here, basically. I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you'll see the picture. Now I have one more tooth still left over here What they want to try to do is put implants in. Um, but it's going to take a while to get that done. And they said that the tooth that's left, that tooth has to be pulled as well. But the one that's left can wait until I start doing the implants. In the meantime, they set me up with something called flippers. The flippers are like dentures, temporary teeth. So this is why I have the mask on. And I'm going to show you what I look like now. You guys ready? I think they did a great job with the flippers. So this is temporary teeth until I can um, start doing the implants. With me being diagnosed with multiple myeloma and my multiple myeloma um, is at the point where I have to do treatment, I'm going to have to wait until after I finish the whole regimen of treatment before I can start the implants because the treatment is going to um, weaken my bones, the bones that we would have to uh, drill the implants into so but I'm happy with my teeth um, I am grateful to my old teeth that took the blunt of the whole fall the whole pass out I am well I'm doing good no more side effects um, the side effects lasted for a little minute I want to tell everybody thank you. Thank you to all of the people who knew that I had COVID and who had my back, who called on me and checked on me every day, to everybody who sent me well wishes and continue to check on me and send me well wishes, and to all of you out there who tuned in to listen to my story, thank you. Now, as always, if this is your first time here, I want to say welcome and thank you for coming and watching the video and please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know every time I post a new video and to the people who have already subscribed and who came back because they just enjoy me and enjoy my videos. Thank you. Welcome back and I appreciate you. While I was editing this video, I realized there was an important piece of information that was not added on to this video. So I'm going to let you know now. When I went to the hospital, I really went to ask them about the monoclonal antibody treatment because I was told that um, after five days, you can't get it. And at the point that I went, it was like seven days. They told me to come back the next day and speak with somebody. When I went back that next day, that's when 
you know, I said I just wanted to find out about it, what it's about, um, whether it's a good fit for me or whatever. So I got up early in the morning and went over there. They want to take me straight in to start the the um, the antibody uh, uh, infusion, I guess is what you would call it. So I didn't have any water. I didn't take any medication. So from the very beginning of them, you know, putting me in the chair and starting to put the IV in my arm, I said, can I get some water, please? Um, and they said, um, sure, let's just get you set up and we'll get you some water. And I'm, I'm like, I'm really, really thirsty. My mouth is very dry. Now, I don't know if uh, you know, I probably haven't mentioned it before, but on top of everything else that I have, um, I have Sjogren's disease, which makes your mouth and your eyes dry all the time. My mouth is always dry and I always have to drink water. I sleep with water next to me because I will drink a whole bottle of water, big bottle, a whole big bottle of water throughout the whole night. But anyway, that's another story. So I'm telling the lady because at this point, there are two people hooking me up. There's the, the I guess they're both nurses, a male and a female. I'm asking them for if I can get a, uh, some water. They said, when we finish hooking you up, you can get some water. So when they finish hooking me up with the saline, I said, okay, can I get some water now? I really need some water. And they were, uh, the lady who was the one that kept responding to me about the water. She told me, well, let me call down and uh, make sure that you can have water. And I'm like, you know, you know, a minute ago you said I could have water. Um, she's like, well, just let me, you know, make sure, let me call down. And if they, if you can have some water, then I'll get you some water. I said, okay. She came back in to check something within that 30 minutes that I was in there. Um, before the incident happened and I asked her again, she said, um, I didn't, I called down and I'm waiting for them to call me back. So the whole time that I was sitting there, I did not have any water and my mouth was extremely dry. And that is an important piece to this story because I think it has a lot to do with how everything turned out that day. Zoe. Zoe. That's Zoe.